And welcome back to Panasonic Live at IFA 2012 here in Berlin. And now we're going to talk about design. Design, um, a big topic at Panasonic, and therefore my experts are designers themselves. Working for Panasonic, there is Suzuki-san and Rosa-san. Welcome to Berlin. Well, of course, I do have a few questions when it comes to design, because I would like to know, as you are the designers, who is designing the kitchen appliances, which seems to be the latest thing at Panasonic? And these products are designed by our member of the Small Kitchen Appliances team in headquarters of Japan. Okay, so have you been a chef first or a designer when you wanted to design these objects? Maybe I should... Uh, of course, of course, yes. Uh, and uh, we'd try to... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. We'd like to try to the, make the product uh, for using the products. Okay. And so you're using them at yes, home? Yes, yes. And, and how many design centers does Panasonic have? You working at the same yes. office? And we have five design centers around the world. Five. Yeah, New York, London, Shanghai, Kuala Lumpur, and also, of course Tokyo as well. So we work globally. Okay, there's no Berlin. How come no. there's Kuala Lumpur but no Berlin? We do have an office in um, uh, Wiesbaden. In Wiesbaden? <laughs> it's not a design center. No, it's not, but that's why I'm asking. What mm -hmm. is so special about Kuala Lumpur? <laughs> but uh, London Design Center is for the whole, whole of Europe. Yeah. So we also uh, work with German designers and it's for the entire. Okay, then, then, <laughs> then, I'm, uh, then I'm happy. Um, what kind of kitchen appliances does Panasonic do in general and uh, which one do they sell? So, for example, yes. a microwave, yes. bread bakery, yes. and rice cooker, yes. and something more. And it's something more, okay. Yeah, and uh, in this time, uh, we are offering to the customer mm -hmm. uh, these uh, small appliances products uh, mm -hmm. at first of uh, at first time of uh, in European market. And and are the kitchen appliances all in the same matching design? Does it mean that uh, I will also soon have a rice cook in the same design as here? Um, well, um, all um, kitchen appliances are designed with different user needs and different. Um, just brief, so they do look different, but they all come from the same design philosophy. Which is? Futurecraft. Futurecraft, exactly. That's something that you should tell us something about. What, what's behind that ah, term? Futurecraft future is um, Panasonic's uh, design philosophy for all products. And it's about putting people and the environment first. And also, it's about um, creating a better world, better future by integrity and uh, craftsmanship of the Japanese culture. So. Well, yeah, I, a lot of people believe a good day starts with a good coffee in the morning. Yeah. So this is, this is making a better world That's right. right ahead. But when it comes to, um, to the environment, the products, the resources that you use, what, what kind of products do you, or what kind of materials do you use uh, majorly for your products? And are they rust free if they are? Uh, uh, these products are using just stainless steel mm -hmm. or glass. So it is uh, for a durability mm -hmm. and a longer life for the customer on products. Yeah, but then if it lasts too long, you, yeah. you're not going to be able to sell them new products. Mm. <laughs> That's but bad. About, you know, creating better products for the world and better for the environment. So we think about the future as well. Okay, and, and how eco-friendly are these products then? So uh, we are selecting the mm -hmm. material. Uh, for example, stainless steel for lo for longer life. Mm -hmm. So it it makes to the customer uh, to using a long time. So it is uh, um, saving resources. Yes, right? yes, that's right. Oh, that would that would be too bad to, to recycle them. But but thank you so much for for the little uh, glimpse of the design department. And maybe I'm paying a visit. You are to be found in Japan, right? You are working in the, in the London office, and I might pay a visit in Kuala Lumpur finally just to <laughs> understand why do they have one and we don't. So, uh, Rosa san, thank you so much. Also, Domo Aragato to thank you Suzuki much. san. And uh, keep on the good work. I love the fridge, by the way. <laughs> the fridge is magnifico. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, let me have the mic then, because I think, Kevin, you my expert when it comes to home appliances now. I am, yes. Uh, Breakfast Series uh, products this year are brand new to the Panasonic uh, Wikers lineup, so uh, very, very excited about them. So uh, we uh, are very, very happy to have them in the range, and um, no doubt there's going to be lots of questions about these because they're, they're new, something brand new for, from Panasonic for 2012. 
Well, the thing is, like, it's live, so we can say whatever you want, and nobody's going to punish us right away, afterwards, perhaps. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to know that I insisted on being in the other kitchen where the chef is, but he is uh, rehearsing something. That's why we had to move over here to this uh, very uh, stylish uh, fridge. Mm. Probably it's because they don't want to feed us. That's <laughs> the whole problem. That's why it's my favorite food, my favorite topic talking about food. So starting the day off with the, the breakfast series really gives you a great start to the day uh, with Stylish. And as the, uh, the guys there from Japan and London have just told us, they are really excellent looking products as well. So not only do they, they cook and um, boil water and toast bread really, really well, they look fantastic in your kitchen. And there's a joined up message as well. So whether you buy a, uh, a fridge freezer, a washing machine, or a, a toaster, or a kettle, they all have the same symmetry and design. So they look very, very nice in, in your kitchen when you're showing off to friends and family. Everything has to do with the philosophy of future craft. Absolutely. Uh, that's, that's what it says, like aspiration, craftsmanship, human focus, one with the earth. Yes. yes. I mean, uh, you already feel good with your, uh, with your product then. So uh, are you ready for some questions? Go for it, yes. Now I'm very curious. This is going to be the first time that we will have questions concerning like home appliances. So the first one coming from Olivia, Olivier Dahl. Can I wash your coffee makers in my dishwasher? Yeah, they're made out of... Uh, yes. You can. The, the, not the whole... Uh, you would obviously only uh, wash the, the filter. The filters are made out of plastic. And if we actually uh, go across and have a little look, uh, so here we have uh, the coffee makers here. If we li li lift up uh, the lid on the here, these, if I can get it to go up. If you go. That's it. That's it. I gave the microphone, you don't even need it. It's, it's great. Okay, so in here we have, have a, a, a plastic filter. So that can quite happily be put into a dishwasher uh, and washed. So, uh, yeah, there's no problem there at all. And obviously, with it being stainless steel, very, very nice and easy to uh, wipe and clean as well. Oh, I see. Now, for, for a second, I thought, like, oh, why is it that they're writing something down in, in Bri, but it's just the... the it's it, it's, the it's an adjustment for Yeah, the refinement fine, fine of the, the coffee that you're putting in there. So okay, so I think that's something that you might say about pretty much every coffee maker. You shouldn't put the coffee maker itself no. in a washing machine, no. in a dishwasher, I no. mean, as for uh, single components, this should be possible. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're making fun right now, but apparently there are some people who've been also putting their animals, l their life pads, really? into a microwave just to uh, dry them. Nope. I think that's the reason why you had to write it down into a manual that this is not the case. You should not do it. Absolutely. So not. officially, do not put your coffee maker of whatever brand it is into a dishwasher. No. Doesn't do your coffee maker or your dishwasher any good. Absolutely. So uh, continuing with Brendan Eel, he would like to know, what can your toaster do apart from toasting bread? Okay. Uh, it has um, some other features on there as well. It also allows you to um, defrost and de uh, reheat uh, your toast or your bread. And it also has, if I quickly just flick this down, a bread warmer. So you can put your, uh, your bagels or your, your buns on there and you can keep them nice and warm while you're uh, utilizing some of your other devices that you might have in, uh, have in the kitchen as well. Yes, so when it comes to uh, swipe and sharing, this is something that belongs to the Smart Vieira uh, department. The toaster in the first place is there to make good toast. It is indeed, yeah. It's, uh, it's a really high quality. Uh, we have two models. We have um, a step-up model, which is the, uh, the, uh, the one over here. Um, this is our, uh, uh, our uh, normal um, mod uh, model. Uh, there are well, what's the difference between what's the difference except the color? A very, very good question. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the design. Um, this one actually has five browning uh, uh, steps for your toast. This one has seven browning steps. So you can actually, if you wanted to get really uh, your bread a perfect brownness, um, you can do that, toast it to, the, to perfection. Also, the display, if you notice on the side here, Patrice, we have um, here... If I just turn around to you, uh, we have uh, different things. So we have uh, here LEDs turn up, uh, light up as well. Um, on, on the other model, they, they have uh, LED lights on the side. So slight, right. slight difference in, in the designs. Okay. So let me come back into the middle of this one. So, uh, Brent Neal, uh, your answer in that matter, for that matter. Uh, coming to the next one from uh, Roger. What capacity kettles do you have? Okay. The capacity is 1.4 liters. Okay. 1.5 liters. 1.4. 1.4 liters. Why 1.4? That's the standard size of a, of a kettle out on the market. So 1.4 liters. And it takes approximately to boil the water in a 1.4 liter uh, kettle. It takes ours about three minutes, approximately three minutes to boil it. So, okay. uh, you know, again, all about the eco message here, making sure that we we're utilizing the power in the most economical way. So we're getting the, the, uh, the water to, to boil um, in, in, a, in a very fast time, three minutes. Okay. 
but we still have to figure out why it's exactly 1.4, who started with it. Uh, I, that's a question for somebody uh, uh, who de designed kettles a long, long time ago, perhaps before I was born. I'm up for it, as this is the first time we're here with all home appliances. Absolutely. I'm, I'm up for the challenge and to see some new infos about devices. Adam Lai, hey, look at him. Uh, does the coffee maker need filter paper? Um, no, as, we, as we, we saw a little bit earlier, um, it, do it doesn't necessarily need to have a filter. You can, you can use it from here, but uh, um, you, if you wanted to, if you wanted, uh, prefer to have uh, filter paper, uh, technically you could put that in there, but um, as I say, um, out of the box, uh, you could actually put your coffee uh, in there and uh, be able to use the filter that's already provided by the, uh, the products there. But, but if, as I say, if you wanted to use paper filters, uh, you can also put them in there I if mean, you wanted to. I mean, they're not going to stop you, but the way that this uh, machine has been manufactured, it totally fits into the future craft philosophy. Absolutely. It's uh, rather environmental friendly. Yeah, saving you the having to buy it, go and buy those extra paper filters, absolutely. See, the first time being in a home appliance, and I already know a little bit of it. Absolutely. You like your coffee. Yeah. So, Adam, this has been your answer. Continuing with a question coming from Catherine Warburton. Are your kitchen appliances energy efficient and environment, uh, environmentally friendly? Yes, they are very much so. Um, we've, uh, we've heard from the uh, design side of things, uh, from, from the guys from the design facilities, but we also, um, from the, the way that they actually uh, use power. And now in a lot of our um, white goods, um, our um, kitchen appliances, we use um, inverted technology. So if you go to a microwave or we get look at our washing machines and fridge freezers, they use inverted technology. Now, inverted technology very much looks and regulates the power so you give you much more um, uh, economical use of the power within the home so thus saving you um, saving your, your energy bills so whether that be through um, making the, uh, the device work quicker um, so that the power's not on so long or whether it'll be through um, having a more of an even uh, use of the uh, the power v both ways it would be very very much more economical and with um, it's a technology that finds its own pace it does uh, when it comes to energy consumption for, for example with uh, um, a washing machine Okay, a washing machine will rotate around yeah. and around and around, and uh, to get your washing to, 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 to wash, the, the washing has to go up to the top of the, the drum and drop back down again. This is what's called the beating effect. Now, most washing machines will do a certain amount of revolutions, okay? Usually 45 RPM, so they will go, go around and around and around and around. Okay, if you um, uh, put, a, say, just a, a blouse or a shirt into a washing machine, what generally happens is it sticks to the outside. Okay, of the washing machine. You might have done yeah. the washing at home, Patrice, and you might have had the, the washing stick into the outside. Or you might put um, into the washing machine uh, a duvet, something very, very heavy, and it's just rocked or it's just rolled around the bottom of the drum. What the inverter does is it works with a sensor inside our one of our washing machines, and it will speed up or slow down the revolutions of the washing machine to ensure you're getting that perfect wash, but you're also saving power. Because if it is very much that uh, that T-shirt's going around and around and around, it will slow the drum down, so it's reaching the, the top point and dropping right down, thus saving power. But what about when you have the two items in the very same washing machine? Though? You have the two items, obviously it will do, um, because you're putting a duvet in with a t-shirt, you're still making it heavy, so it'll still be doing the, uh, it will having to speed the revolutions up around to ensure it gets that perfect beating. This, it's a question that had to be asked. Absolutely. Specifically from me. Okay. So Catherine, uh, this is your answer. Continuing with um, a question coming from Will Use, what were you okay? What were your inspirations when creating the range? You as not the designer? No. Um, as we heard again from the design facility, it's all about uh, future craft. So we're we're looking at not just uh, implementing this design philosophy within um, our um, home appliances, but if you look through and uh, later on in the week we'll be uh, visiting Viera and other elements, other products that Panasonic do. You'll see that future craft is now starting to to be moved throughout the whole of our uh, product lineup, whether it be TVs, whether it be Blu-ray players, or whether it is small domestic appliances or um, major domestic appliances such as washing machines and fridge freezers. So the philosophy is very much that we uh, are innovative in our design, but we are contributing to society. So with the design, we're making life easier for, for our customers. So we're making it very much easier, but also keeping that eco message as well. So saving money, saving the planet. Because by 2018, uh, Panasonic very much wants to be uh, the, the, the innovative, the most innovative eco co uh, company in, in the world. Very, very much passionate behind that, driving that for 2018. 
I'm uh, quite aware of this uh, achievement um, as we're able just to talk about the la uh, last year. Um, yeah, and as I can see the effort of saving also uh, some resources, I can see that with the Blu-ray player, they're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that, that not only is that... Smaller, they almost disappear. They are getting <laughs> very, very small. And, and not only is that just, just for, the, uh, mm -hmm. for, for the materials that have gone in to make it, but also you think about the packaging we have these days, that we actually have to obviously put them in boxes and ship them around the world. We're reducing the size of packaging as well, which again is, uh, is saving the environment massively. Okay. So, uh, Will? This has been your answer. Continuing with uh, continuing with Dave, what about lime scales? Lime scale, yeah. What are lime scales? Lime scale is where you have um, uh, an element, say, in the kettle, and you have very, very hard water. Now, I know that the UK, I I we have um, over in the UK, um, h very harsh water, hard water, and in the Just kettle, the same over here. Yeah, <laughs> we you have a have if you have an element in the kettle, it ends up getting a, a white residue left on it, okay, which is called lime scale. Um, okay. And that, that ends up, uh, you can also get lime scale in, in, uh, in irons as well uh, and all sorts of things. But in our, ke in our kettles, the great thing about it is, if you want to open that up, if you want to show it to the, uh, the, gu the guys, there is no element in the kettle. Okay, so the, so the element is separate from the actual interior where the water goes. So you will never uh, suffer from having lime scale um, in your kettle. You won't have to buy uh, products to clean that lime scale out, and you won't get lime scale, uh, the taste of lime scale in your water either when you're drinking it for your tea or your coffee or whatever hot beverage you may have uh, used the water for. Hmm. Now I finally learned the English word for. Kalkablagerung. I won't even try to pronounce that. Kalkablagerung is quite easy. <laughs> All right, Dave, this has been your answer. Continuing with a question coming from uh, uh, Phil Marshall. How many colors are av available? Okay. Uh, I see two here. Yeah, we have, and we also have a black and white as well. So um, there is also in the range, there's four colors in total um, in, in all, both the, the coffee makers, the kettles, and the toasters, we have um, those four colors. Four colors. Yeah. Are there more to come? Are they available on every uh, local mark? As uh, yeah, uh, well, it will depend down to uh, each European nation which uh, which colors they decide to to to, to sell. Um, that we we offer there is four in the offering, um, and that will be down to um, the customers at home going out and researching which ones they've got in the, their independent country. Yeah, and there, there is uh, there is the option of, of expanding the range if we feel necessary, and we have people that uh, feedback the customers out there feedback to us saying that they were a certain color that they would like to have because um, it's all very much again going back to that philosophy of uh, contributing to society if people turn around and say well we, we want to have a red kettle in our uh, in our kitchen then we'll we will can we can have the possibility of manufacturing that so you never know maybe sooner or later there's going to be some customization yeah. uh, offered by Panasonic you never but know. as for now it's four colors and it's time for a little Paul uh, we're in between, we always ask you some questions and we like to have the tendencies, the trends coming up. Uh, this time we wanted to know which breakfast appliance would you want the most out of this uh, variety that we're offering you. Uh, there's either the kettle, uh, the coffee maker, or the toaster. What do you think? What's going to be the most popular item here? Um, I would say, coming from a British background, the amount of cups of tea that, that are consumed in Britain, probably the kettle. Well, apparently most of our viewers seem to be from the UK because, yes, 52% uh, would uh, love to have the kettle. Perhaps it has also to do with the, with the way that you just described his... Uh also possibility. And another very key feature is you can actually, wherever you are placing it, it turns around 360 degrees. So you haven't got to fight around with it, getting it back onto the base like you do with some of the kettles. Like, oh, I don't care, it's on top of it. Yes. Perfect, fine. Yeah, absolutely, nice and easy. So 52% would uh, go for the kettle, is 63% uh, with the coffee maker, but only 12% at least want a toaster. Okay. You never know, maybe they already have one, or yep. in the US anyway, it's low carb, yes. or no carbs Absolutely. at all. Absolutely. So no toast. <laughs> so continuing with a question coming from Phil Marshall. Uh, he would like to know how many uh, colors are available. We just already had that, so let me, <laughs> let me press to continue to see Sabina E's question, which is, how long does it take to bake bread in the bread maker? Okay. Which is not on display here. That's why I wanted to go in the first place to the other kitchen. Uh, There's the bread maker. We kept you away from the chef, 
factories. We kept you away from the chef because we know that you would have, uh, you would have probably taken over. Because I know you're a bit of a, you like a bit of cooking yourself. Yeah. So uh, now the bread maker um, gives you a c quite a few options. Um, the great thing about the bread maker is it doesn't just cook your normal traditional white or brown or granary loaves. Exactly. You have, you have lots of, of yeah, lots of different options on the bread. But if you did take a normal uh, brown, white, or granary loaf, um, you have a choice. Okay, you can do a four-hour long bake. Okay, so it takes the four hours, um, or you can do a rapid bake, which will take two hours. So you can um, cook a loaf from from flour, yeast, and water, or from a bread mix from no from nothing to full-on bread served with butter and jam on it in two hours. Or you could do it because I have a bread maker myself. Do you? Yeah, it's it's kind of embarrassing, but I really have most of the home appliances here. But in older models, and what, what was it possible to do is like you just could put everything all together. Yes. And then use the timer. So yes. by the time that you got up, Absolutely. everything is done. So yeah. no matter two or four hours. Yeah. If you wanted to have um, hot bread for breakfast, um, and you, you were all planning to have family breakfast at eight o'clock, you could put the bread maker, set the bread maker to come on at four o'clock right. in the uh, in the morning. You would make sure that you would have a barrier between. Uh, what I mean by barrier is you wouldn't put all the, in the ingredients in together. So you would raisins, for example, need to be put yeah, in this we'll extra. Yeah, we'll come onto that. Yeah, we'll come onto that in two seconds. With the actual bread, um, you would have to have a barrier between the yeast and the water. If you have the yeast and water together, they will start reacting straight away, and it will start to re the enzymes will start re reacting, and it won't rise so much. So uh, with the times, you will need to have um, a barrier. So you would have to have the flour. So you put the water in. The, or the uh, yeast in, the flour in, and then the, uh, the the liquid at the top. So yeast, flour, water, or the opposite way around, water, uh, flour, yeast. But as long as there's a barrier between the water and the Will yeast. Will the uh, barrier maintain until it's going to yeah, be mixed? Abs absolutely will do. Or y what you can do, you can opt for the uh, top of the range model, uh, which has a yeast dispenser. Now, it actually will dispense the yeast at the correct time in the cycle to ensure that you get that perfect rise with your bread. That's so what the new latest yeah, model Yeah, the does. latest model has a yeast dispenser. The one that comes in aluminum? Uh, it comes in stainless steel, yeah. Stainless steel, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. But ah. you, you made a very good point about uh, raisins because um, on two of the models, um, we have a raisin and nut dispenser. Um, on the the uh, the basic model, we had the when through the through the cycle through the program. If you need to put your raisins in or your nuts in, the device will beep. Okay, so it indicates to you that you actually have to open up the lid and put in your your nuts or your raisins in. The reason why you have to do that uh, rather than chucking in at the beginning is at the bottom of a bread maker. There's uh, paddles that go around. It will chop up. Uh, the raisins or the nuts into very, very fine specks. Okay. So, and they will all be in the bottom of the bread. And also, again, the enzymes within the, uh, the nuts and the, uh, the raisins will start to react with the yeast. And again, you won't get a perfect rise in your bread. Um, so having a nut and raisin dispenser, you, all you need to do is put your nuts and your raisins into the dispenser. And rather than it beeping, it will, do, it will automatically just drop the nuts and raisins in at the perfect time so you get that wonderful fruit loaf or nut loaf that you might want to have. Just the way that I prefer it. And uh, now, Sabina, uh, apparently you just uh, heard there are lots and lots of ways of making bread, and therefore it depends yeah. how long it's going to take in between two up to four yeah, hours. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can make anything for, uh, and you might even want to just choose to just make the dough. And you see, you, you can, uh, there's programs where you just make the dough, and then you can go and you can freeze it and then take it back and bake it at a different time. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do um, a bread from start to end in one program. You can spit it up if you wanted to. Um, you can also make things such as uh, pizza dough, uh, croissants, uh, French breads. Um, obviously, the French bread doesn't come out, Patrice, in one long stick out of the bread maker. It comes, it comes in the dough, you roll it out, and then you can put it into the oven and, uh, and to, and, and to cook, cook it. So it gives you lots and lots of options. And all of a sudden, this has become like a cooking show. <laughs> with some advices. Sabina E, this has been your answer. Continuing with the next one. Why is it that I'm hungry right now? I already ate, but I'm I hungry. I just, I just have like, the flavor of fresh bread. Steve L would like to know, can I boil just enough water for one cup? With 1.4 liters that you can put into this kettle, I think that should be enough for a cup. I don't know about your cups in the UK. Yeah, uh, you, you certainly can. However, um, Think you, you know that's the uh, that's a much more if you're only wanting one cup that's a much more economical way of uh, using your kettle. Um, if you're um, using it uh, uh, for the whole family, obviously you need to boil more water. If you're making pasta, the only time you're really going to be using uh, the whole 1.4 liters is generally when you are using it to help with the aid of cooking, for such as filling it right up, boiling it, adding the water for pasta, things like that. Um, but yeah, if you want to just do one cup, two cups, um, you can uh, you can can do that. 
Again, remembering there's, it doesn't have to cover the element because there's no element in the actual kettle. Right. Okay. So, Steve, this is your answer. Continuing with uh, Brioni Cyburn. Does your bread maker allow you to choose the time your bread is baked? Yep. Yes, yes. As yep, we, uh, we established that, which is great. So you can very much uh, tailor your, your bread to when you want to wake up or when you want to have it through the day. Um, or if you've been, uh, you know you're going to have a busy day at work, you can set the timer on. So when you get home from work, you've got a nice uh, fresh, fresh bread waiting for you to, to serve to the family. And we continue with a question. Thank you, Mr. Cyburn, for this question. Desmond, Desmond would like to know, when will we see the, these products on the high street? Okay. Um, again, that will, that will depend on uh, which country, whereabouts uh, you live within, within Europe. Um, but the, the, the range is, is launched um, here at IFA, and it will start um, over the next weeks and months, starting to filter into, the, into distribution into, into stores. So uh, very, very soon. Very, very soon. Okay, so depending, of course, on from where you are writing. Dave would like to know, not only smart TVs, but also smart toasters. Does the toaster prevent the bread from getting burned? Um, yeah, you've, you've got your, uh, your browning... Uh, Is it a smart toaster? Can you say? <laughs> Is the, you it, doesn't have a, it doesn't come with a display. Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't come with an app yet. But no doubt at some point in the future, uh, we, there will be toasters and kettles and coffee makers that you will uh, use apps to probably turn on and get into a bowl for you. But at this, this moment in time, um, no, uh, it doesn't have an app. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's not got any brown breaking technology as in um, does it stop toast burning and stuff like that. Um, it, it, the whole concept of these, uh, the breakfast series, is very much down to the design side of things rather than uh, coming up with uh, new, massively new technology. Um, so uh, the bread has five, has five steps or seven steps. Um, the seventh step and the fifth step, so it gets it, the brownness, is designed to stop it burning. Okay, okay, so it should stop it from, uh, from actually physically burning. But it's also like a very important uh, point you just uh, mentioned there. Uh, of course, we are not trying to reinvent, or Panasonic is not trying to reinvent the wheel itself, no. uh, but it's just adding. Absolutely. There's a lot of people that, um, that love Panasonic as a brand uh, as, as, and the products they bring out, and they want to have symmetry through their house, whether it be their TV in the front room, whether it will be uh, a, a Blu-ray player up in the bedroom, whether it be a fridge freezer, uh, whether it be a washing machine, microwave, vacuum cleaner, um, uh, iron. And we also now have um, breakfast series products that can also sit on the countertop and also have uh, that Panasonic symmetry as well. I just wanted to make again a comment considering that it's my VR, but I'm just going to no. let's keep it to myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Dave, thank you for your question. That was your answer. Continuing with uh, Robin Wayne, um, how long does it take to brew four to five cups of coffee? Okay. Once uh, again, it depends on what kind of cups you're using. You sure. Um, the uh, coffee maker um, makes up to eight cups, okay, uh, eight cups of coffee. Eight so British cups. Yeah, uh, eight cups. So uh, it actually tells you in here. Yeah, because uh, I, know, I know American uh, cups that, that are just the they're same they're size. Yeah, they are big, big old cups. That, so that would be one American uh, cup, depending where you're, you're eating, but eight yeah. regular European eight, ones. Eight, eight cups. And it's two eight cups, it takes uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. So, and so for ten minutes, um, so you obviously can calculate down roughly. So four obviously is going to be five minutes. Um, so um, five minutes is the exact answer for, for for four cups. Also, the great thing about it, because it's stainless steel, uh, we have stainless steel products as well. It retains the uh, the temperature in the coffee, okay, above seventy eight degrees and above for uh, for up to thirty minutes. So again, you're making your coffee, it's lasting for 30 minutes, so you haven't got to put your coffee maker on again and use more and more power. Right. So for 78 degrees and above, which is generally what most, most people will be able to drink coffee at, it will retain that heat uh, in, the, uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the machine for, for 30 minutes. So this is your answer, Robin. And uh, here we have another poll. Uh, considering the most important meal of the day is, is it uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Kevin? Well, everyone always says to you, the most important meal is breakfast, but whether actually people that agree with that, so I will go for dinner. You will go for dinner? Yeah. But why do you think breakfast is the most important well, meal? That's what everyone, everyone tells you, and hopefully everyone is saying yes, because um, it is, because obviously we brought out a wonderful range of breakfast series products to complement their uh, need for breakfast. Is it going to be breakfast? Well, the, the, point, the point is, uh, 
it is scientifically proven that the most important meal is indeed the breakfast because uh, your body needs all that energy for the rest of the day. Uh -huh. You won't be able just to absorb as much energy as in, the, as in the morning. But then again, the breakfast time it varies from 6 o'clock in the morning sure. till 3 o'clock noon or anything like that. But indeed, 75% uh, agree that the breakfast is the most Good. important meal. Uh, only 4% go for lunch. Right. And 21, uh, the remaining 21%, just like you prefer, the dinner. Okay, so that's uh, for our poll. And we continue uh, right away with the next question coming from Shikna. Shikna would like to know how much small, how much small appliances wait? Or how much do they wait? Um, it all depends. I mean, the... For the uh, for the kettle, when you put four point uh, one point four liters into it, it uh, sorry, without having any, any water in it at all, it's a uh, one point six kg. So um, uh, that that's the weight of the kettle. Uh, the toasters uh, and the uh, the coffee makers are, uh, are, are, are very much around the similar weight because they're all made out of the same sort of uh, composition, same sort of uh, uh, materials. Um, but Yes, they might not be the lightest uh, products in the world, but you are paying for quality product there. So, you know, there, there is a lot of uh, craftsmanship that's gone into the design there. Good quality um, uh, materials made, used to make it, so it's going to last you the time you need it to last you. If it was uh, very, very light and perhaps flimsy, it's not going to get to last you. Remembering going back to the whole point of our design philosophy, which is future craft, that we uh, bring out products that uh, contribute to society, so they last for long periods of time. Well, I would understand with a pen that which you uh, which you're gonna carry around for quite a bit when you, you know you want to toss and turn a bit, but for a kettle, even for a kettle that would make sense to know the weight before toaster. Yeah, sure. But it's up to you, Shikna. Anyway, we uh, we are grateful for your question, and this has been your answer: 1.6 kilograms. Yes. I'm impressed that you even knew that. I'm impressed. Uh, continuing with uh, Walter White, how long does the stainless steel jug out of coffee maker retain? Yep. Of the coffee maker retain heat. Okay, so as we, we just said, uh, to, we'll do to 78 degrees and, and above. It will, once you've made your coffee, it will last you for approximately 30 minutes. So uh, enough time to go and do your daily chores and still come back and grab another cup of coffee. Enough time just to watch our program going back having a cup of coffee. Mm, yeah, absolutely. That's how easy it is. Thank you, Walter, for your question. Continuing with uh, a question coming from uh, Paul Chambers. Does it butter your bread when you, for you as well? L O L. Um, not quite. Not at the moment. No. Um, when you uh, are making your bread, you have an option if you wanted to put your bread. Uh, We're talking about the bread maker in that yeah. case. Okay. Yeah. We put, you put butter into your into your bread. I assume the bread maker or the uh, the toaster certainly. There's doesn't. an L O L. It could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. This question could also be about the fridge. Pretty no, we, much. Well, at the moment, I can quite uh, casually say, Patrice, we don't have any product on the market that butters anything to be quite honest at the moment. So uh, whether that's something that we might be able to do for an app in the future, who who knows? But uh, um, with it, it, you never know. Maybe you, there's going to be you can. Swipe your, yeah, your you bread with some butter and share it then. You never know. That, that would be awesome, and uh, I can't wait for that to come out. Definitely. So, Val, thank you so much for that question. Continuing with... Sorry, I had to do it. It had to come. It was too, you know... You, you should patent the idea. Then, then you'll be you know, a very wealthy yeah, man when you're Yeah, old. I'm getting myself into trouble. But, hey, Brownie Saburn, uh, again, would like to know, do your coffee makers use ready ground coffee or pots? Um, it's like filter. It's yeah. like a filter cafe. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I haven't seen those kind of coffee machines anywhere. But for some reason, people are getting away from the from it the espresso. It's like it's a coffee. It's a it's a filter coffee machine. Um, you can actually mm -hmm. on the this these this model here, which is the the top end model, the step up model. We, you can actually buy uh, the coming in the box comes an attachment for tea, so you can actually make tea through it as well. So I can also use it as a tea maker. Yeah, you can also make it as a tea maker. On the top, on this the step up model, you can buy, uh, not buy. Sorry, it's in the box with it. Um, you have the uh, the tea attachment, so you can put your tea leaves into uh, into the filter, and that's it will quite, make the tea. That, that's quite handy. So forget about the. Uh, so no pads, no pots, no capsules. Yes. And an old school coffee. Uh, yeah, absolutely maker. traditional. Traditional, I love. I like that. Uh, you're from the UK. You just celebrated the jubilee of uh, your very queen. So very I know you're very... Over here in Germany, it's different. <laughs> it's different. 
Bobby Bridgman, I don't know if he's from the UK, but I know that he would like to know. Are the colored sides made from plastic or glass? Are they scratch proof? Okay, on this step up models which we have here, they're all made from, uh, from glass, um, high quality glass. Um, on the, 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 the model just down from this one, uh, the, the basic model, they are made from uh, a high quality plastic um, sides to them. Um, but as I say, if you wanted to go for the best and get the glass effect, then you go for the, the, these models here. Okay. Which come in the we come in the, these two colours. It's very easy to, to detect the, t the the difference in them. These is the the purple and the sort of grey charcoal colour, whereas in the the plastic ones are black the black and white ones. But are they scratch proof? I I yeah. presume he means yeah, like are, yeah, real true. scratches, yeah. not my girly Absolutely. scratches coming in here, and not, nothing is happening there. So Bobby, this has been your answer. Continuing with the next one uh, from um, Phil Marshall. Will the toaster toast larger slices of bread in different thicknesses? It will indeed. Now, it will toast... Does it toast bagels? It will do, yes. It will toast bread um, from 8 centimetres to 12 centimetres high. Okay, 8 centimetres to 13 centimetres wide and between 1 to 2 inch thick. Um, when... Um, when the design company came up with the idea, uh, design for the city came up with the, with the idea of the breakfast series, especially the toasters, they went out to across Europe and bought out every different type of bread they possibly could. Okay, so they, they took them all in loads and loads of suitcases back to Japan, and then they designed a toaster to fit around to ensuring that every uh, bit of bread that, that you, can, you can purchase across Europe would be able to fit in there and be able to toast. So uh, again, it's all about making sure that we're providing a, a, a manufacturing products that are going to suit uh, customers' needs. And uh, hopefully, um, we've, we've suited everyone, all the European uh, bread lovers' needs out there by bringing out a toaster that will uh, be able to toast their bread. I mean, it, just thinking about it makes me really smile. It, it, Realizing that, you know, because of the differences of culture, you have people with some mock-up toasts and be like, oh, these crazy Europeans, but okay, if they want to, we're just going to make it work. Yeah. Not bad. So, Phil Marshall, this has been your answer then. <laughs> uh, Catherine uh, Warburton would like to know, how did you get your great, unique designs? Um, I, I again, uh the, with with this design, um, we go back to our uh, Japanese heritage. I think if you go through the whole of uh, the, the, the white uh, goods appliances, so all the, the kitchen appliances and um, major domestic appliances such as your washing machines, uh, your fridge freezers, and even into our um, into our TVs and home AV products, it's done through Sen and and and, and N, which is basically straight lines and curves, um, and that's how all of the the symmetry through um, the actual physical design of these products that they have these. Straight lines and, and, and circles and, and curves um, and they try to make sure that that happens all the way through so in, in, in encompassing that now in the in the way we use future craft um, uh, technology and design ensures that we're using both the the heritage of, uh, of Jap uh, Japan which is with the as I say Sen and N uh, design along with the new uh, design of uh, this uh, future craft technology that we're using all right so Kevin this has been your answer Continuing with the uh, final question for this segment, uh, what different colors will the products be, avail be <laughs> available in the UK? Uh, in the UK, um, in the UK, that we will have um, all four colors. So you. So it means black, white, uh, purple, and Char gray. Yes, the charcoal gray. Absolutely, we're having chocolate all gray. That's Char what charcoal. Charcoal. Oh, charcoal. Charcoal. Gray. Charcoal. Sorry, charcoal gray. Okay. Um, that's very much what the UK take, uh, are taking. Um, these, these products are very, very popular in the UK. Um, mo most households have, uh, uh, certainly will have a kettle and a toaster. Um, majority of the households will have uh, the coffee makers. So that's why the UK um, are taking all, all four colors. And, but that might differ depending on whereabouts in Europe you are. How come the purple is such a popular color in the UK? Um, it's really popular in the UK. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I think we can, Again, people are getting very, very arty now with the, the way they want to have their kitchens. Kitchens were years and years ago were very much a place where um, cooking was done and that was it. Whereas now people are using kitchens more as a place for socializing, having uh, discussions, uh, spending more time in, um, uh, in their kitchens and, and want to show off the kitchens. They're very proud of their kitchens and spend more time designing them and decorating them. And so why not bring out products that are going to fit in with that philosophy as well? Okay. So... Thank you for that question. Thank you, Kevin, for uh, your expertise. No problem at all. It won't be the last time. 
uh, and we will see each other again at uh, every full hour, pretty much. May I ask what's going to be the next topic? I think it's Viera, Patrick. It's going to be Viera Connect, and then again, we were going to be, uh, be able to talk about swiping and sharing. So talk to you soon here on this channel, live at the Panasonic booth. Kevin, thank you so much. This was Patrice Puidibeta for now.